It's been a long night for Iditarod fans because um, if you were able to subscribe to the Insider like I do, um, that's how you follow from afar, there was, uh, you could watch the little flags moving on the GBS tracker, but there weren't many updates coming up in either the standings and there was a, a long time with no video. And the reason for this was that uh, there was an ice fog um, along the Bering Sea. So the regular um, commentators, Bruce Lee, Joe Runyon, and uh, Greg Heisler, um, weren't able to get into uh, Shaq Tulik. Um, I don't think they got into um, uh, Uniloclete either, although the Insider team was there, but uh, they couldn't update um, video. They just didn't have access. So um, the planes were grounded but the dogs were just fine. So, Mitch Seavey uh, got into Kuyuk this morning. Uh, he's resting there now. Uh, Nick Petit is very near. He's just 10 miles out. Uh, Dallas Seavey and Yor Olsen uh, camped just before going out onto the sea ice. So, uh, we have uh, Wade Mars is still in Shaq Tulik. So I'm not sure uh, what his strategy is there. I don't know if he just, uh, his dogs just don't have the gas anymore. Um, I haven't seen an interview yet. I, I think there's one posted now, but I haven't had a chance to watch it. So let's see, uh, Jesse Royer just got to Shaq Tulik too. Um, and then Ali Zirkel is leading the next pack out of uh, Una, Una So. Uh, we've got, it's, it's, I'm not sure how much of a race we've got. It's, it's hard to tell with the run race schedules since I was asleep. I didn't get to follow them too closely. Um, Allie usually rests um, in a Unilaclete or shortly thereafter, and she rested in the checkpoint this time. Um, her next uh, resting spot is most likely, unlike um, other mushers, most of them uh, camp right before going out onto the sea ice. Uh, Allie Zirkel often rests on the sea ice. It's, uh, it's about a 360 degree view. Um, it's ice and blue to the horizon in all directions. So um, it, it's, it's hella windy out there too, but that's, uh, she frequently does that. Um, she usually has it all to herself too so she feels like her dogs get a good rest there after all they are bred for the weather and Allie herself says that she just doesn't typically get that cold she's been in Alaska a long time and she's accustomed to it so we'll see how things shake out um, but right now it looks like uh, Nick Petit and Mitch Seavey are the uh, the two contenders but again uh, while a few years back it looked like it was Jeff King free and clear at this point and a blizzard came in off of the sea so the weather is unpredictable at this point in the um, in the geography it's uh, they are crossing sea ice they are not technically on land for part of this stretch. This one leg from Shaktulik to Ko Koyuk is um, at least partially, about, about two thirds to three quarters of it is across the sea. So they'll get up there and then they'll cut over to White Mountain where they will have to take a, everybody has to take eight hours in White Mountain. So we'll see who gets into White Mountain at what time and how uh, quickly they are able to get off the mark because uh, while the restart may be in Caltag, the, uh, there, there's an earnestness in the racing from, uh, from White Mountain to Nome. Um, we'll see how things happen. It's important at this point to have uh, treated your dogs right and treating your dogs right is treating your dogs in the way that's correct for your dogs. Um, a lot of mushers, especially the, um, the ones that are really talented and experienced, considered veterans, and yet still maybe a little young, um, 
often at this point they start looking around themselves and racing the other teams. This is what happened to uh, Brent Sass um, last year, or at least that's the uh, prevailing thought on this is what happened to Brent Sass last year. He was out in the lead for a good part of this stretch. Um, he was up there with Mitch and Dallas CV. Um, and he stopped running his team and started racing the CVs, which ultimately, it seems, was his downfall because um, his dogs, while healthy and uh, well cared for, uh, refused to leave the checkpoint. They went out a few yards and they just said, no man, we're not ready. So, if you've taken care of your dogs, if you understand who your dogs are, and most of these mushers really, really do, um, no fault to Brent's ass, he just made a calculation error, and a lot of mushers do that. Even very experienced mushers do that. But um, if you've taken care of your dogs, if you really know who they are, they should be able to carry you through to the um, end. Um, that said, Mistakes happen, injuries happen, things that you couldn't predict, things that even the most um, dog-friendly musher, which is a weird thing because they're all dog-friendly, um, even they um, can't predict everything. Um, Jeff King's team in that year, they got they, they did fine, the dogs did fine, but I mean, Blizzard comes up and you, you can't fight a Blizzard. It, it's a blizzard. You have to hunker down, and that's what he had to do. So um, he had to hunker down to protect his dogs. We'll see how the weather comes in. Um, like I said, it's uh, bad for planes right now, but the dogs don't mind it.